recently I was lucky enough to walk the Ridgeway with my elder sister and it's the first long distance hike I'd ever done. We walked 95 miles in a week, that's about 140 kilometres across amazing countryside, really ancient sites, really quite remote at the beginning, which is a surprise given how crowded England is, but across beautiful countryside and past really historic sites like Wayland Smithy here, which is thousands of years old. We then walked along the Thames, where it started to be a little more crowded, which was stunning and we hit the one week that was 30 degrees we saw hunting barn owls we saw hares of course it wasn't all hard work there were ice creams to be had and as you'd expect i did lots of sketching or as much as i could so i want to share my tips and tricks and what materials i took when you are hiking and having to carry everything and yes, we made it to the end and we are still friends. Let's take a look at what sketching kit I took with me and then I'll tell you whether it worked or not and what I would take next time should I do this. I saw somewhere there's a phrase that when you're hiking, every, every ounce weighs a pound. Uh, in terms of my actual hiking kit, my sister who I went with is a really experienced hiker and she told me exactly what to take. Literally took a, a change of clothes and a lot of blister plasters. First thing I did was actually find a plastic bag to put everything in because we didn't know what the weather was going to be like and if my rucksack leaked I didn't want my art materials to get wet number one priority <laughs> obviously I took a sketchbook and I'm going to show you that in a moment I took water brushes I took some dual tip watercolour pens in greys a white pen and then some waterproof fine liners a little spray bottle Oh, I've just had a thought. What would be good is actually to weigh these things. Let's see if those will balance there. Just so you know how much all this weighed. So that was 14 ounces and that is too much. And if we go for grams, just over 400 grams. So sketchbook first, elastic bands important part of the, the kit and a bulldog clip always really useful so I was pleased with those come back to these in a second first decision is what sort of book you're going to take now we were walking the Ridgeway this is a long distance path that winds across the the centre of England so I decided the format I wanted to take was a concertina sketchbook. This is a homemade concertina sketchbook. I thought seriously about taking this little sketchbook because it's smaller and it would fit in, in more in my pocket. The reason I didn't was when I was swatching out colours before I went, I realised that they were bleeding through and I do not want to carry a sketchbook where every other page can't be used because of bleed through. This is my usual sketchbook that I take. This is, you know, this was for holiday sketching from last year and so forth and other, other bits of urban sketching. And it's a little moleskin, so pretty much the same size. And it's not watercolour paper, but it takes a wash a light wash and I thought about taking that but as I say the format I really wanted was so that I could document the the journey over the week through through that concertina and I'll put a link in the description this is homemade ever so easy to make uh, and I've got a video about how I make a concertina the paper is simply a heavyweight drawing paper. It is not watercolour paper, but you could make it with watercolour paper should you wish. If I just put the reverse side, you can see that I haven't had any bleed through and there isn't really much cockling either. So I was pleased with that as a choice. I think it's important to consider what it's going to go through and to make sure that 
you you do choose a really good format for the sort of holiday you're on say this is hiking when we went to australia this is the etcher sketchbook i took with me that that was super for for that experience i've got to flick through and a whole load of tips on holiday sketching so again i'll put a link in the description the next important thing i packed was a piece of kitchen towel and there isn't that pretty that's a week's worth of one piece of kitchen towel for the week i dried it out it's really handy because otherwise i would be cleaning my brush on my leg just put that inside and because this is concertina book which would fall to pieces that's where the elastic band came in i wanted a really lightweight paint set and i had just been sent these they are viviva color color sheets and i thought what a brilliant way to test out color sheets so the watercolor is just painted onto these pages there are little protective sheets in between it's really lightweight Yep, I'll take those. It's got a little palette here at the back that you can use for mixing. Either I can just pop that under there or again, pop it inside and that's all very compact. I took two water brushes. That's just me being a bit belt and braces. I thought, oh, what if I lose one? I won't be able to paint. What if one runs out? I should have only taken one. Watercolour brushes, if you don't know them, the water goes in the handle. You just fill that up. And then you squeeze. The water comes out here and you can pick up the colour. So they are super convenient but they're not great really hard to control the amount of water you're using the the bristles don't come to a great point they are very nylon you know they're, they're, they're not great but they are so convenient and i think rather than trying to carry yet more water we were walking in 30 degree heat we were carrying about two and a half liters of water for the day because there wasn't water en route I didn't need to carry more water um, to, to, to paint with. I needed to drink it. So, you know, that was a good choice. Should have just taken one. Took a little spray bottle because I like to use spray in, in my work to get soft sort of diffusions. Mm, was that good or bad? That's a bit of a marginal decision. I took these grey pens they're not Tombow markers, but they're um, an, a cheap equivalent. They're from WH Smith. They're water-based, so they blend really well. They've got a bullet nib at one end and a brush at the other. And I'll show you a couple of the sketches I did with those. Great thing about them is that you can add tone to your sketches without adding more water. And if you're tr working outside, drying your work is a real issue. As it happened, we hit the hottest week that I think the UK is known for ages. So everything was drying really quickly. But in the UK, it's usually cold and damp. So anything that lets your work dry quickly is a good idea. These are little waterproof fine liners. And I took a variety of widths from 0.1 up to one millimetre. And I did take a few duplicates because they're quite old and I thought they might run out. Again, that's me just being paranoid. I should have probably only taken maybe three, maybe four, not the seven I did take. And I took a white permanent pen because I thought I might want to add highlights to my work. I didn't need that. So you probably want to see what I actually did with these. Let's have a look. I'll give you a flick through of the, the book and then we'll we'll draw some conclusions. So we were walking along the chalk path, so very typical with these little stand of beech trees sort of on, on the brow of the hill. So I tried to capture one of those. This is Wayland Smithy, which is a, a long barrow. Oh gosh, I think about 3,000 years old. Not quite sure of the date of it. With lots of local folklore and everything. So it was brilliant to sit and sketch there. 
we had amazing thunderstorms and this the sky went black and and was approaching us luckily we have got to our our accommodation we weren't wild camping i said no i need a b and b with uh you know a nice warm shower thank you I did make notes so I could remember things. It was sort of a view across misty valleys and, and so forth one morning. These were a couple of quick sketches I did with the grey tones and I used them and then watered them down afterwards. This was a church when I was feeling particularly hot and tired and I spotted a shady bench. So uh, it was more the bench I was interested in than, than the church, but, you know, a, a typical little English country church. We did stay in a bell tent one evening. I said that I refused to camp. I didn't want to carry all my stuff. And this was the only accommodation we could get. This was supposedly glamping. There was nothing glamorous about this. There was sort of a chipped mug and, you know, a bit of a squidgy bed. Hey, let's not be fussy. And I used watercolour and the grey tones on this. Again, another typical, the path stretching ahead. I'll come back to that. And then this was the view right at the end. This funny white splodge here is actually a lion cut into the, the hill. It's near Whipsnade Zoo and, and there's a, a chalk lion there. And this was, our, we were waiting for my husband to meet us at the end with the very important picnic and bottle of bubbles. And I, I did that. I had a spare page, so I thought it would be fun to do a little map of our route, where we stayed, and just remind myself of some of the things. I've got a surprise because we turned up somewhere and there was no one there to let us in in the middle of thunderstorm I was not happy more thunderstorms these are the plasters for my blisters that that's Wayland Smithy we saw barn owl just hunting across the field so I just put a few things in there uh, that is a scar where they are building HS2 the high speed rail link across the beautiful English countryside and it is such a scar and such a waste of money but I won't get too political and those were bubbles at the end so I just thought it was a bit of fun. So tips. I'd never done this sort of long distance hiking. Multi-day hiking was exhausting both physically and, and emotionally. You're walking for seven hours each day maybe a bit longer so you have to be quick. I thought I was going to walk and sketch and wouldn't it all be lovely? No, you've got 10, 15 minutes to rest your feet, do a quick sketch. So whatever you take needs to be fast. If you look at this sketchbook, which is what I did in Australia, we were travelling around in a hire car. I had more time. I had more emotional energy to de do slightly more detailed work. I think my, my tip is be realistic. If you're doing multi-day hiking, great to take your sketchbook, but you will not be able to do beautiful finished work. You will be capturing what, what's going on. I took the wrong colours. I took these colour sheets because I thought how light they were. But this these are not English colours. It did not look like that. Now, Funnily enough, when I went to Australia, I was really disappointed by the colours I took because they weren't strong enough and bright enough for, you know, the rainbow lorikeet. I took English colours to Australia. I should have taken colours like this. These are made in India. They have the tropical vibrance. I think that would have been far better. And the colours I took to Australia, I should have taken here. So do anticipate the sort of lightened colours that you're going to encounter and, and match your colours to them. That would be my next tip. Take things that you can be speedy with because if you're walking with someone else, you know, it's just not fair to spend an hour on sketch. You're talking... 15 minutes maybe um, and you need to get on before the thunderstorm comes in or you've still got miles to go. I would absolutely recommend taking photos as well 
but take them afterwards. Look first, sketch first, then have photos afterwards. Don't rely on your photos and think I'll do it when I get home because you won't and it's just not the same. I would recommend taking notes either on your sketches or, or just allowing a page because you do forget things. You might have noticed in my kit, don't bother about taking a pencil and an eraser. Go straight in because you have not got time to do all that sort of drawing and rubbing out. Just go for speed and immediacy. These are not brilliant pictures in any shape or form, but already I'm looking at it and thinking, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yes, the feel of that place. Sum all that up, even though these are not brilliant sketches to be displayed, but they will prompt all those rich, juicy memories. Definitely be kind to yourself. Don't expect perfection would be another thing I'd say. Make sure your equipment can be quite versatile. These are versatile. You can use them for single sketches or to add tone to watercolour. Take versatile materials and be ready to improvise. You know, day one, I absolutely knew I'd taken the wrong colours because no English sky has ever been that colour. But I just had to improvise and just go with the flow. My final tip is just do it. No matter how inaccurate or sketchy things are, how unfinished they are, a sketch will bring back richer memories, smells, atmosphere, noises, all those sorts of things that will mean so much more to you when you look at them in the future. Just have a go. The, the least perfect sketch will say so much more than a photo.